Recent polls taken before his announcement yesterday have Ron DeSantis significantly behind Donald Trump in the Republican primary. In the latest CNN national survey conducted last week, the Florida governor trails Trump by 27 points among registered Republican and Republican-leaning independent voters. In a March poll, the deficit for DeSantis was just four points. The latest Quinnipiac National Survey has DeSantis trailing Trump by 31 points. He trailed by 14 points in March. And a new Emerson College of Iowa Republicans out just this morning as Trump ahead of DeSantis 62 to 20 percent. Let's bring in former chair of the New Hampshire Republican Party. She knows a thing or two about this, Jennifer Horn. Uh, Jennifer, he's, uh, Ron DeSantis has a long way to go. What do you make of uh, this botched rollout and the impact in the long run? Well, there's no question that this was, there was, there's nothing good. You know, he went on Fox and tried to kind of spin it. Oh, yeah, we broke the Internet. Uh, that's not what happened, unfortunately, last night. And it is possible that in, in a few months, as you look back, that it might be that we learned that the Internet broke uh, Ron DeSantis. You know, there's it, it created a moment for Donald Trump. But but more equally important to that, it also, you know, when you look at those poll numbers and the degree to which uh, DeSantis, is, his numbers are declining, it's probably undermined the confidence of a lot of those primary voters that he really pretty desperately needs right now. Um, you know, there was a, a hashtag going last night, disaster, you know, disaster, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Ron, does, Ron disaster. Those kinds of things can stick. Um, you know, he's got to get on the ground into Iowa, into New Hampshire, and start impressing people face to face, um, you know, a little bit more than he has now if he wants to have any chance at this. He, he may have hit, you know, to Joe's point earlier, uh, he may have, uh, you know, hit his peak already and we look again as you look at those numbers last night did not help him in any any manner no. so jennifer uh, we if we move past the technical side of this which most people will <laughs> probably by tomorrow and you get to the meat of what he and elon musk were talking about and you try to find what the message is what the rationale is for the campaign why he would beat donald trump and it was a pretty arcane conversation when you get down to it. They were talking about the college accreditation process and taking that away from schools right. that use DEI. And they were talking about ESG. And he was complaining about, you know, Vanity Fair magazine, all these other things that he believes are unfair to him. <laughs> but didn't really go after Donald Trump in any direct <laughs> way. He complained about some of the appointees, about Jerome Powell and Christopher Wray, and said, I'd fire them, and Donald Trump appointed them. But other than that, right. didn't really go at the guy he has to go at if he wants to be the nominee. Is that going to change, or is he going to try to tiptoe around right. Donald Trump somehow? You know what? It sounded a little bit whiny last night, and it parts of it. And um, and and I saw some people talking about, gee, he's, it was an hour of talking about policy. We never get that in politics. Mm -hmm. It was to your point, Arn. It was it was just it was it, it was so in the weeds in some area in some areas, um, and just. Honestly, I think not particularly engaging for a lot of voters. He has to get past that. Uh, his, I, I, it seems to be a fear that they all have to confront Donald Trump. <laughs> Somebody has to do that. That's how you win a campaign, and the other folks sitting at the table will tell you that. When you're in second, third, fourth, fifth place, um, you got to go after the guy in, in first place, and they all appear to be afraid to do that. And I think with DeSantis, it's starting to come across a little a bit uh, or a lot bit um, like he's just kind of an, an empty suit like he's got all this bluster and look at me I'm the authoritarian governor of this one state but when push comes to shove and he's announcing he's afraid to call Donald Trump out he's afraid to say what has to be said I don't know how you win like that yeah, I, I totally agree. Former chair of the New Hampshire Republican Party, Jennifer Horn, as always, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you. Uh